Hi everybody, this is Luke and in this video we're gonna talk about brake sensors and chain rings. No, that's not true, just about brake sensors, otherwise this video would take too long. And how we deal with them when we're trying to install a mid-drive e-bike conversion kit. But before that, as I said in the previous video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of update about the situation. If you don't want to hear about that, you can skip to the content by going directly to the menu that will be shown down here. In the last video, I said that I would have a little announcement to share with you. This has also to do with the reason why I haven't produced any video in this period. In the last two months I was busy moving from Paris to Switzerland. I won't go into the details why I decided to leave France, but instead I'm gonna talk about the advantages of being here. Now, one of the big differences about living in Switzerland is that you are completely immersed into the nature. This also means that people pass a lot of their time practicing physical activity, which also means using their bikes. Talking about e-bikes, they're popular everywhere. What I realized here is that the vast majority of people prefers mid-drive based bikes to a motor-based ones. So when you walk around and you look at e-bikes, the vast majority of them are equipped with mid-drive motors. Talking about the disadvantages that this city has as I'm living in Lausanne, in the French Switzerland, is that the city is quite windy and has a lot of steep climbs. This means that walking around with a regular bike can be pretty challenging. And sometimes you can find up to 40% of slope, so without a powerful assistance, you may not be able to ride around or even come back home. You know well enough that I'm into custom e-bikes. What I love about them is the freedom that you have when you decide to replace a component and you don't have to rely on your retailer to make whatever maintenance or adjustment you need. You can just do it by yourself and I want to stick with that choice, even in this place. That's why this time, instead of buying a used bike, I decided to buy a brand new one. I think that I will go with a 750 watt Bafang mid-drive kit. I will of course keep you posted about all the details for this new build. This particular bike that I choose also forced me to face some challenges that you all guys ask me about in the comment section of my videos. So I think it's also interesting for you to listen about the challenges I'm going to face building this one. But first of all, which bike are we talking about? Because I'm a big fan of my latest e-bike build, I decided to reconsider the Rock Rider series from Decathlon. That's why I choose the Rockrider ST540. To be completely honest with you, an ST520 would have been more than enough, but I liked so much the color of this model and the fact that you have 9 speed paired with the 36 T chainring on the front. Now, before going forward, I have to address this specific topic. A lot of you guys ask me in the comments, why on earth would you need brake sensors? Let me tell you, you really need brake sensors. No matter what kind of e-bike system you have, if it's a cadence or torque sensing system, your e-bike won't be a 100% perfect system. So basically, from the moment you stop pedaling to the moment the motor stop engaging itself, you might count up to a second or two. This time frame is enough to kill yourself in certain situations and at certain speed. So while brake sensors are not mandatory for the system to work, they are mandatory for you to be safe. Because, as soon as you pull the lever and you send to the system to interrupt to disengage itself, the motor will do it. Now, moving away from safety concerns, have you ever discovered before you start pedaling with your bike that you are on the wrong speed? Well, in that case, you need to change your speed while pedaling a little bit. Now, what happens if you don't have brake sensors? Little precision here, this is actually true only if you don't have any shift sensor. If you do have it, you don't have to worry about this. As soon as you start pedaling, your motor will engage itself and push you. And as you may know, that's not the best moment to change your gear. While it's okay to pedal to change your gears, it's not fine if you add the force of your motor. What I do typically is that I pull a little bit the lever of my brake in order to disengage the motor so I can change my speed while pedaling without engaging the motor. Now this bike comes with hydraulic brakes. And this is the first time that I own one like this. As you may know, both Bafang and Tongsheng kits allow you to use hydraulic brake sensors. What usually happens is that you install the sensor here and a magnet on the lever. So when you pull the lever, the magnet will move away from the sensor and the motor will be disengaged. This is a possibility, but there is also another way, which is replacing hydraulic brakes with standard mechanical disc brakes. I can now imagine the most part of you getting crazy about this idea. But there are positive aspects in using mechanical brakes. The first one is reliability. 
Dealing with wires is simpler than dealing with the complexity of hydraulic brakes. This makes the maintenance of your bike less stressful. The other point in favor to mechanical brakes is replacement cost. There's no secret about the replacement of mechanical brakes being cheaper than their hydraulic counterpart. Moreover, it's quite easy to move from hydraulic to mechanical brake parts. And if you decide to go with those, you may simply use the brake lever coming from your e-bike kit. A third possibility I'm thinking about would be to replace just one of the two brake systems. And just keep the other one as it is. I would personally choose to replace the front one because of my habits but I would suggest you to keep the front one as hydraulic. I should also say that having two different levers on the handlebar would be kind of weird. Now, some one of you may argue that hydraulic brakes are somewhat better than their mechanical counterpart. There are tons of video about this topic, so I won't go specifically into this. What I can do is just to remind you that I'm coming from V-brakes, and so far hydraulic might be a little bit overkill for me right now. I might of course change my mind in the near future. Guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button. And if you haven't done yet, and I'm sure that you want the update about my next building, go on and subscribe to the channel. Also click it to the bell icon so you won't miss any future video on this channel. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.